Okay, let me, I've got stuff and I'm running out of places to put it. Sorry, everybody, give me a minute. Okay, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna shift this and, oh. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna grab that. There we go. Hey, everybody. So, yeah. Oh, 40,000 subscribers. That, like, legitimately, that is very, very, very cool. The, this year has had uh, much slower growth for me than last year. Um, and it slowed pretty early in the year. And so by about May, I had given up on the idea of breaking 30,000 in this calendar year. So this is legitimately a nice surprise. So um, that does mean a couple things. It means that I am doing this as a Q&A. Found your channel this year. Cool. Thank you, Biscuits. Um, so, a couple of ground rules for this Q&A. No questions that boil down to, have you seen X or what did you think of X? Because my opinions on various pieces of media is l what literally the entire rest of the channel is. And it's also what the live streams tend to end up becoming on their own anyways. And I want this one to be different. So whatever questions you intend to ask, they can't be either of those things. That's rule number one. Rule number two, I don't make promises about answering any questions unless two things. One, it's coming from the Discord, which I'll check later in the live stream. And two, and like, I'm, I'm sorry to make this a hard rule, unless it's done as a super chat. That's not me saying I'm going to ignore questions that aren't done that way, just that I make no promises of getting to them if they aren't. And also, just to make this one fun, um, I do have, um, I have a water, it's peppermint schnapps, I'm not gonna hold up the thing. And I am willing to take a shot for any super chat of five dollars or more so add that as an incentive yes i am trying to pull in a little extra financing before the end of the year it's been a rough one in a lot of ways but so those are our ground rules on that mazel tov on getting so many subs thank you who would you want as your grandfather out of the 12th doctor or graham o'brien i mean the 12th doctor actually reminds me a little bit of my Actual grandfather, that's sort of adorably grumpy, so probably go that way for nostalgic reasons. Uh, would you ever have Liz on a live stream? I'd be happy to have Liz on a live stream. The logistics are make it very unlikely uh, as it currently stands, but it's a possibility. I'm open to it. Okay, seriously, what were you doing with those flowers on Instagram? <laughs> if anyone who follows me on Instagram, ooh, jeez. Okay, so... Uh, thank you, Tracy. We'll get, I'll get to pouring that. I have, uh, liquid luck. So, um, if you follow me on Instagram, it's at Vera Wild. I don't have at Council of Geeks, which does exist, but somebody else has it. Um, I posted pictures from uh, my last burlesque show, which was this past Friday. Um, and I, uh, I posted pictures, I did two numbers, but I posted pictures from a bridal number that I did. So me and not really a wedding dress, but in items approximating a wedding dress. And there is a shot of me in a chair, leg splay with, the, with a bouquet right there. So I'm not gonna answer that question as to what was I doing, but that's an explanation for anyone who missed it. Cheers, Tracy. This has the potential to be a very interesting evening. We will see how this goes. Whoo! And yes, I am doing shops, which is on the weaker side, and that's as a safety net for myself, because, like, the only other thing I had that was really shootable 
was 90 proof rum, and that would have been a bad idea. Okay. Uh, good luck with the night. Oh, boy. Uh, maybe I'll stay up for this. Six hours sleep isn't bad, right? Actually, six hours is not far off from my standard. I try and be in bed by midnight, and my alarm goes off at 6.30. So, you know, accounting for falling asleep time, six hours is about what I get. Uh, would you rather see John Pertwee return as the doctor or Roger Delgado return as the master? <sighs> if I could only have one, I would have Delgado as the master. Pertwee was was really good, though. Remember a couple of weeks back when I said um, I saw I was going to rewatch Evolution of the Daleks because I loved it as a kid? Oh, God, the tentacles. Why? Oh, yeah, seriously, those things. Like, the design isn't great, but they're, like, so mechanical like if you're gonna do tentacles they gotta have a fluidity to the movement otherwise it's just oh it's painful if 13 got a new companion uh them on their own with 13 and no fam what would you want he she to be like uh uh noting there would be only one that's a good question that's not i don't really have an answer because that's not anything that i've thought about um Again, that has to do with part of uh, part of my tendency to not project too hard specific you know, about specifics of what I want, things I like, like Doctor Who or Star Wars or the MCU to do, um, because then you then you have the trap of well, I wanted them to do this specific thing and they didn't. I do tend to have things that I hope they don't do, but that means that as long as they don't do those things, almost anything else they do might work for me. It still might not, but it won't automatically annoy me. So because my headspace doesn't work that way, I'm not sure I'm actually equipped to answer that. Is there anything you'd go back and study given a chance? Um, I, I wish that when I was a kid, I'd taken dance instead of karate. That, that's a switch I would, made if I, I would make if I could. Should, should 13 get a new screwdriver design at some point? Um... This is the best t-shirt ever. This t-shirt is part of my merch and the link for the merch store down in the description. You can get this. Multi there are four different skin tones for the fist and many color options for this. Um, so, oh God. Oh, the, so the, the sonic screwdriver question. So um, I would say since the design of that screwdriver seems very intrinsically linked to the interior design of the TARDIS, if the TARDIS gets redesigned, then yes, she should get a new screwdriver. If it doesn't, I don't think there's any real reason to do it. Oh boy, Castile. <laughs> what changes would you make for the Fantastic Beast series? Um, well, the first thing that I would do is, I well, in my ideal world, we'd scrap Grindelwald completely and just have it be... The Beast, have it be a smaller story about Newt and about the friendships that he builds and the adventures that he goes on. Unfortunately, at this point, we're kind of stuck with dealing with Grindelwald. Excuse me. Um, at least in the very next film, he's got to be resolved because he can't leave that hanging. So, like, I would say you branch it off into two series. You have the fight for Grindelwald focus on Dumbledore and Grindelwald and have Newt go off and do his own thing um, in a separate series. Because I feel like in Crimes of Grindelwald, especially those two elements, the actual Fantastic Beasts and the building towards the showdown between Grindelwald and Dumbledore don't marry very well. They feel very shoehorned in together, and I feel like integrating them was kind of one of the big mistakes of that film. And also actually of the first film. It's why I think the third act doesn't really work at all, but... Uh, huh, I might have made a big mistake here. We'll see how it goes. Um, oh, and I'll also, I'm not going to scroll back for questions that I missed, especially if I'm drinking. Um, so <laughs> if, if I missed your question, you, you can ask it again. Again, with no promises unless it's uh, done as a super chat. If you had to pick one, what celebrity would you resurrect? Ooh, Carol Spinney. That one's fresh, but I'd still do it. Who do you think 13 was talking to on the phone in the Series 12 trailer? Do you think Kate Stewart's going to come back? I actually hadn't put any thought into who she was talking to. Um, and I am I go back and forth on whether or not I want Kate Stewart back because I liked her at her inception, but subsequent 
returnings of her. I haven't done a lot for me. Do you like Mariah Carey? I, I like All I Want for Christmas. Other than that, it's just not my type of music. Uh, what's your favorite mythology and favorite portrayal of it? Um, been playing too much Hades recently. Um, it's not really a proper mythology because it's not that structured, but I'm fond of, of sort of Irish, Celtic, Scottish folklore. Um, you know, uh, Will, Will of the Wisps and the Morrigan and things like that I'm quite fond of. If I were to pick a favorite, I would say the film uh, The Secret of Kells. Uh, would be my top pick for a depiction of that. <laughs> oh, man. Trent. Oh, how far are we? Ten minutes. This was a mistake. Uh, sorry if you've covered this in your videos, but new fan here. Wanting to get into Doctor Who, where should I start? Grats on the milestone. Well, okay. The multiple, multiple parts uh, to this answer. Uh, if you are already intent to get in it, then you don't have to do what I normally advise. Because what I advise people to do, if they want to try and get someone who has no particular interest in Doctor Who to at least give it a shot, is to show them Blink. But you don't continue on from Blink. So if you're already interested in seeing it, we can skip that step. And to my way of thinking, there are three jumping on points that I think work the best. Um, and I'll actually sort of name them in descending order of how well I think they work as jumping on points. And when I say jumping on, I don't mean, because uh, some of these are further into the new series than just the beginning of it. Uh, because, you know, with the intent being you start there and then go forward from there and then flip back and like catch up. Or even like once you're into it, go back and catch up. Um, I think series five is, in my opinion, the best starting point if you're already really interested in getting into the show. Um, then, after that, I would actually say Series 10, which might sound odd because it was the last series for Capaldi and the last series for Moffat, but it really is a solid jumping on point, even though it has some callbacks. Um, I It works as a starting point, so at the bottom of that list, I would put Series 1. I don't strongly recommend starting at series one unless you are already committed to powering through. And so like, that's why I say start elsewhere to get into it and then go back to series one. Not that series one is bad. It's just series one has a lot of stuff in it that is not indicative of what the show is after that. They were things they tried out early on, but they dropped. A lot of that being some of the goofier aspects of it some of the more campy elements they dropped off and the show took itself a bit more seriously after that and you would think well you start with series two then except series two builds so directly after series one that i'm not sure it works as as a place to start so my recommendation is series five series 10 works if you are prepared to power through some stuff that is not representative of how the show is going to remain, you can start at series one. I just kind of put an asterisk on that one. That was a uh, prolonged explanation. And whoop, I can still pour it cleanly. So that's a good sign. Woo oh boy. Um, should the Slitheen come back? I... <sighs> I don't know what there is left to do with them at this point. Um, I don't want to say, you know, hard no on that, but I don't know. It just, I, I just don't know what there is to do other than have it just be a straight nostalgic callback. And speaking personally, it's something I'm not especially nostalgic for. So, um, how would you play the master? Um, so like as a character, um, if, if I were cast as the master, um, broad strokes, it's hard to say. Like I, I've said, I kind of want the, uh, go, uh, go more quiet, go more quiet malevolence on it because we kind of had the more bombastic, a little bit more over the top, a little bit more camp uh, with both John Sim and with uh, uh, Michelle Gomez. Um, and in the case of Missy, I really liked her, but I think it's time to go the other way and to go more sort of seething intensity, 
We did we did the fun master. Let's bring back the scary master. Okay. Moving along. Any tips for getting subscribers? I have five so far. Unfortunately, I honestly don't. I, I've been doing this for a while now. I think I'm in my eighth year of doing this. Um, so I don't know what the landscape is like starting out anymore. I'm just not a good person to ask for that. And honestly, anyone who's been on this platform, and especially anyone who's had more than a thousand subscribers for, I would say more than two years, any advice they give you is gonna be at best out of date because the platform has changed so much that I, do, I honestly don't know. I mean, my standard advice still applies. Do what you love and be sure that it's something that you want to do regardless of whether or not someone is watching because that'll keep you going even if you're not growing. But in terms of like, how do I get more subscribers? I don't. At this point, I honestly don't know, especially from a, from like starting from the ground level. That may sound contradictory given that I just launched the, um, the break room of geeks. So like I technically started a new channel, but all I had to do was plug it here and it jumped up over a thousand subscribers within a month after that. So I, you know, I had an advantage in doing that. Um, what we got here? Oh, jeez. Okay. Um, what historical figures would you like the doctor to meet? My top picks are Alfred Hitchcock, Joan of Arc, and Helen Keller. Helen Keller would be interesting. Joan of Arc, I think that would be a tough one to do, um, without excessive mythologizing of the, of the historical figure, which is usually one of my reservations about, uh, those stories in the first place. Uh, I might start not going quite so uh, close up to the line on this. Uh, forgive me. As far as Alfred Hitchcock, maybe I'd be, here's the thing. I'd be curious to see what kind of story you build around that. As far as like him as a person, I don't know. I think he's too easy to do in a caricature style. If I were gonna pick someone, hmm. Oh boy, I'm kind of drawing a blank right now. Um, yeah, no, I am absolutely drawing a blank because I, I kind of want I want the doctor to meet more people who are important but not well known. I'm kind of over celebrity historical figures, you know, when they're like, oh, I know who that is, and I I would like to see more that are like, oh. I've like maybe heard of that, but I don't know a, a ton about it. Um, I kind of like to see that come up a bit more, um, but I don't have an example off the top of my head that I like can think to cite for that. Probably because my brain is at this point uh, becoming increasingly muddled. <sighs> oh God. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Uh, uh, do you plan to update your top doctor's list with the 13th doctor? Not until she's finished her run. At that point, I will. But not before then, because I've learned with Capaldi that my opinion of a doctor can change over the course of their run. So I, I don't want to place her on that list until she has left the part, because I feel like it's not being fair to her. Otherwise, and I'm not saying no one else can place her on a list. I'm just saying for me, learning from my experience of having my opinion of a doctor change while the show is airing, that's how I'm approaching it. Uh, do you have an outfit for 12 when you get to his reviews? Will you be doing overdue Doctor Who re-reviews? Um, I don't yet. I'm looking into that. And yes, um, given that enough time has passed since um, Capaldi's run that even though I have actually reviewed those already, I do intend to keep it going. It'll probably, it'll become Doctor Who Take Two Reviews uh, or something like that. Uh, if two things cross over, what would you like them to be? Personally, I would love Doctor Who and Rick and Morty. I'm not a huge fan of Rick and Morty. Um, I, oh, it's funny. I did, a, I did a video ages ago with Ryan about like um, movie mashups that we wanted to see. I think the pitch that I had that I was um, 
the most excited by was the idea of Ghostbusters teaming up with Ash from Army of the Dead to fight the ring. <laughs> yeah, Samara from the ring movies. That was like the the concept I was happiest with. I don't have a question. I'm just trying to get you pissed off. Seriously, though, I enjoy your content. Good work. Oh, God, you, you folks, you are killing me. Thanks for that answer. Actually did help. Oh, well, good. That's good to hear. Oh, boy. Oh, I was going to stop going up so close to the top. That, that, that is not what happened. Oh, boy. <sighs> oh, God. Oh, geez. I might need to slow down. I'm not... So, I'm First of all, let's backtrack. I'm reserving the right to stop if I feel that I need to stop. But, um, at right now, <laughs> uh, I'm going to... Uh, if another one comes right away, I'm going to, like, take a little bit of time uh, before I get to it. So, I do still have work in the morning. Uh, don't make yourself sick. I, I'm, I'm, that's, that's why I'm setting these things. Oh, my God, I just had a hilarious idea. What if the fam swap bodies in an episode? Uh, I don't know, man. I feel like body swapping is really a staple a fantasy sci-fi shows, any fantasy sci-fi show that goes long enough eventually does a body swapping episode. Uh, or at least the ones that I've seen. You know, Buffy did it, Farscape did it, pretty sure Star Trek, various Star Treks have done it. I, I, it just feels like a very standard sci-fi fantasy thing to do eventually that I kind of would rather they didn't. Maybe that's me. You totally skipped my $5 super chat. Oh, crap. Uh, I was only saying congratulations, but that kind of hurt. I'm sorry, Tiffany. I probably started rambling on on other stuff and missed it. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm legitimately sorry, Tiffany, because I, I am trying to stay by my word on this. And I am... Okay. All right. That That's a bit more reasonable. Oh, what should I do for my 22nd birthday tomorrow? Well, tomorrow's a Wednesday, so uh, I would say go get for schnockered, but uh, given that it's a Wednesday, I'm going to advise against that. Scooby-Doo live action films, do you like them? I've never seen either one in their entirety. I've only seen bits and pieces. So no opinion and also not a huge Scooby-Doo fan, so not something I I'd super have an opinion on either way. Have you heard of mixers? I have! They're for wimps. Besides, most mixers, you know, you make a drink and then you just put in the equivalent of a shot into them anyways, so. Well, oh, God, Tracy! <laughs> You're killing me! I don't mind. I love you. Uh, what was the book, movie, show that sparked your love of sci-fi? No need to take a shot. Okay, I'm, I'm taking that as an exemption. <sighs> Thank you. Um, I couldn't actually tell you because I have been into sci-fi for as long as I can remember. Because you need to realize, I, I do not remember watching Star Wars for the first time. I don't remember watching Star Trek for the Voyage Home for the first time. That's how long they've been part of my life. That's how intrinsic, um... They have been to my growing up. So I can't even tell you what started my love of sci-fi because as far as my memory is concerned, I have always had it. Um, that $10, isn't that two shots, not one? I did not say that I would take a shot for every $5. I said I would take a shot for every super pledge of at least $5. Not that I would take a shot for every $5 increment. Nice try, but I did cover my butt. You can backtrack and check the tape on that. Uh, which old companion would have the biggest uh, reason uh, to 13? I'm not sure what you mean by reason. Uh, Martha, I would think. Um, I mean, if I were just to think of a past companion who I'd like to see meet 13, 
Uh, it's kind of selfishly. I, I want to say River Song because I just want to see her face. Um, oh, there's something else that I, I can do. I got a couple of packages from folks that I'm pretty sure were bought off my wish list. Um, it's inappropriate to address your employees as whips based on their drinking preferences. <laughs> I'm sorry, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am legit sorry. No, knock to anyone who takes me. I like mixers. There's nothing wrong with them. I was just, I'm just, I'm not uh, in a 100% state of mind at this point. So, uh, anyway, wish list, not witch list. Meg! <laughs> Mmm. Meg, you're, you're gonna get it. Um, okay, anyways, I've got a couple of things. I actually don't know what's in them. I did, they have been open, so it looks like I know what's in them. But I only opened them to, like, get a sense, like, to reach in and see if I could find a gift receipt. And, or, like, check to see if it looked like something that I had ordered. Because I've still got things that I ordered for Christmas for people coming in. Um, so... Um, I don't, I don't know, um, what is in the, hey, how are you? Not sober. That's how I am. So first thing, I have a suspicion what this is. Now, also I should stress before I open any of these, I have not gotten to the PO box in about a week and I need to, cause I know at least a few people who have sent me stuff through there. Oh God. Okay. Um, Paxilis, I, I, I will come back to that. I promise. Just give me a minute. Um, so I haven't gotten to the P.O. box, so that's why I'm pretty sure this stuff is on my wish list, because when you order off my wish list, it comes straight to my house. So, we're going to see what we got here. I like the shape on this already. I think there's only a couple of things that could... <laughs> ah. Ooh. Okay. There we go. And that, my friends, that is a rainbow um umbrella. <laughs> that makes me happy. I'm not opening it indoors. I know bad luck. Not that far gone. All right. Let's see what else we got. I'm coming back to that, that 1499 pounds, which I should learn conversion. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, oh, hey, Tracy. This one's from you. Go figure. Oh. I should check. Was there a gift receipt in that one? This one, also from Tracy. Oh my God. Like, I would tell you to stop spending so much money on me, except don't stop spending so much money on me. What do we got? Oh, nice. I did have, I've had this on my wish list for a while. So Justice League, Gods and Monsters. This one, like, I really hold up because I'm, I'm kind of over the DC animated movies being based off of existing graphic novels or store or comic book storylines. And I really, I hold this one up because this was an original story for the animated film. And I wish they would do this more. This, this is great. I would say I need to review it, except I'm, I've already done that one. Don't worry. I just tossed it onto the bed. It's fine. Um, uh, I, I really wish they, they would do this stuff more. But I've already done a review on that, so I don't need to redo it. But man, that was ages ago, because I still had the green screen. Wow. Okay, I've got one more package. All right. Okay. Oh, let's see. A gift for you. <laughs> Tracy, these are all from you. Oh, this makes me really happy. Which Doctor Who story is a guilty pleasure story for you? For me, it's Evolution of the Daleks now. Um, I need to rewatch it. It's been a little while, but the closest to a guilty pleasure is probably Robots of Sherwood, because I'm not sure if it's good, but I love the banter so much. Cut it open <laughs> with a katana? <laughs> with a something or katana. I'm not... With a what? With a jam? I don't even know what that is. I don't know if I don't know what that is, nor do I know if I have that. I love getting these. 
because I can re- Ooh, I'm not gonna reuse that one though. That's in Slytherin colors! Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, that's nice. What do we got? Um. Ah! <laughs> oh, goodness. And so this, <laughs> this, you actually, I meant to move this off the standard wish list. This is actually something that I put on there to keep track of because um, it's for uh, my daughter <laughs> for Christmas. I can't remember if I ordered one as well. That's really, <laughs> thank you though. Oh, I'm a dope. And let's see. Okay. Whoa. Oh, nice! Oh! Ah! Hmm? Uh, <laughs> because I needed more hoodies in my life. And I'm gonna put it on while I read the question that I have to take a shot for. I very much enjoy your videos, so, not, so I'm flinging some dosh at you. Sorry it isn't more. Uh, but the gardening work is about to dry up for a couple of months. Thoughts on expanse? No shot needed. Um, I might take the shot anyway. No, I'll pause. I'll pause on the drink. Because it's, it's, we're barely halfway through this live stream. Oh. Let's see. Oh. Oh, that fits nice. Mm. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> um, I still haven't seen The Expanse. I've heard really good things about it, but um, I have not seen it yet. So I actually am not in a position to answer that. Started watching the Ghost... Start, oh, sorry. Started playing the Ghostbusters video game, and oh my god, it's extremely good. I have not played that yet. I've heard good things about it, and I know when I put up my... Um, uh, uh, when I put up my... Um, my, my reaction to and my thoughts on the new Ghostbusters trailer, uh, more than a few people pointed me to that uh, as being like more or less the official third Ghostbusters. And I still haven't played it. Like, I, I mean, I've got a freaking collection of games there I still haven't played, so. Um, but I have heard good things about that. I put on my hoodie of all great power. Oh, goodness gracious. Drunk in a hoodie, my Christmas witch has been granted. Make you sassy little. Mm. Hmm. Um, currently binge watching Broadchurch for the first time, halfway through season two at the moment. Any chance I will see a continuation of the of that review series sometime soon? I don't have plans um, to go further on Broadchurch. It's the kind of thing that, like, I'd come back to um, if, if I had free time, but I kind of don't. So no plans at yet. I could always get commissioned to review it. That's a possibility. When will you watch Shazam? Hopefully soon. I want to try and cram it in before the end of the year so I can figure out whether or not I'm going to put it on my top ten of the year list. So soon, I hope. Ha! Yeah. I personally... Oh, uh, boy. Questions are getting away from me. Yeah. I personally think uh, if River ever met 13, she would squeeze her second <laughs> wife's butt at some point. I am sober enough that I know to censor myself. Although the fact that I'm drinking probably means that this is going to be demonetized anyway. So there you go. I can talk quickly while still iffy. Uh, what's your preferred method of consuming missing Doctor Who? Animation uh, with original audio, novelization, CDs with original audio. I do like the animations, provided they don't try and over-correct too much. Like, I still haven't seen the Macro Terror, but I've seen bits, and I feel like they cleaned up the um, the look of the Macro too much. Like, there's no way that the original looked that good. And I feel like that's that's a little bit innocent. I like Drunk Nathaniel. I like you too, pirates. Uh, people who have been doing the super chat are using British terms. Are all the people paying you British? Am I being unpatriotic or poor by not doing the same? Well, first of all, if you're an American, it's very patriotic to be poor. That's the American way. It's the majority stance. Um, but yeah, like about, it's about an even split according to my 
analytics between US and UK viewers. It's about 30% in both cases of my uh, of my viewing demographic. So it's neck and neck viewership wise. As far as donations, eh, Super Chats do seem to come a little bit more from the UK. So I mean, if anyone's feeling patriotic and wants to show the Brits what for, hey, gauntlet's been thrown. Um, Sherlock will be 10 years old in 2020. Any thoughts on doing an anniversary retrospective? That thought hadn't even occurred to me. I mean, now that you've said it, maybe? Uh, I don't know. How about 13th century Muslim physician Ibn al-Nafis? I apologize for butchering that. Uh, as a Doctor Who historical, he's also written the novel Theologus Autodictus Thing, uh, which was one of the precursors to science fiction. Sure! That kind of thing I think would be awesome. I'd be all for that. Uh, would you be the doctor that had a would you be the doctor that had a hangover story? Happy Christmas, love. Oh, boy. I really hope I don't end up with a hangover. Um, out of curiosity, how much of your demographics is from Australia? I don't know off the top of my head. Um, what are your thoughts on the cast movie? Are you excited? Are you scared? Are you both? I'm just confused because I've never understood the, um, the appeal of cats in the first place. So, you know what? I'm now curious as to the percentage of my subscribers that are in Australia. I'm gonna go look. Let's see. Uh, audience, top countries, 4%. So as far as percentage of my viewers, you are fourth place because it is currently, oh, United States has surged ahead. Um, now, this is just based off the last 28 days. Obviously, this shifts because especially when Doctor Who is airing, it's much more a 30-30 between um, the U.S. and the U.K. At present, within the last 28 days, the United States was 39%. United Kingdom, 24 Cana Canada, <laughs> Canada, 4.2%. Australia, 4 Germany, 38 Germany. Ha! <laughs> okay. Oh man, this is this is turning into an interesting evening. Uh, news publication soon discovered the increase of UK debt was in large due to continuing funding into Council of Geeks super chats. <laughs> oh, I am sorry that I screwed up your your uh, capitalistic system, although. It probably screwed itself up before I got here. Um, have you seen the season 12 TARDIS updates? I'm digging. I haven't because I've been avoiding spoilers. Like, I, I watch the trailers that come out because I'm curious enough for that. But, like, extra behind-the-scenes things and a lot of the rumors I've been trying to avoid. So, no, I haven't seen that. You're acting strange. Have you been ex infected by... Red first one's tech. <laughs> oh. The sword got infected, but not Adora herself. I guess she is organic matter. I've been rewatching that lately. I my my daughter's now into it. My daughter's into She-Ra. I am so happy. Um, I, I will get to this question in a second. I'm drunk on cider. <laughs> <laughs> Have a bit more carry on, mate. Carry on. Okay, I will pour this while I talk. My daughter is finally into Shira. I got her into it because I explained to her that yes, there's. Oh, geez, I just dropped the cat. Okay, because I, I explained to her that yes, there's fighting and there's swords, but that's not what it really the show's about. The show's about the relationships between the characters because that's what she she is more into. So she's now watching it. She's she burned through season one on her own and I've gotten to watch some of season two with her and we very recently watched that episode. The the one set in the snow where there's it's basically drunk Adora. Um are you drunk or are you Noel and have a happiness? Porque no los dos my current assumption is that life is imitating art and the current UK parliament is under slowly in control. That would work. But anyways, I, 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 have to, I have to share this. So, on her own, without prompting from me, without nudging, without hinting, without any of that, when I asked my kid, because she told me she'd, she'd finish season one on her own, I asked her what she liked especially. And she said, 
Catra in a tuxedo. I am so proud of my kid. That makes me so happy. And like at this point, because I showed her, I showed her the, um, the little music video thing I did for Scorpia that's over on the break room. And when it, <laughs> when it had the clips of Catcher of the Tux, again, without prompting from me, just watching it, she's watching it goes, Catra in a tux is the best thing ever as far as Catra is, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Catra wise. So Catra wise, her in a tux is the best thing ever. I'm so freaking happy that my kid is into the show and she singled out Catra in a tux as something she really loves. <laughs> oh, buy her something expensive. I've bought her Christmas already. She is covered. Uh, I shall force you to remember the race dance cameo in Casper. Oh! Cruel. And for the record, that was not race dance. That was a cosplayer in that universe. I refuse to believe that they were actually connected. Ah. Would you recommend the Rendwarf episode Quarantine, my absolute favorite, as a blink S test to see if someone will like the show? It uh, worked for me when I was about six. I think Quarantine would work for that. Marooned uh, would also be a good test bubble episode for, uh, for Red Dwarf. I feel like I'm surprisingly coherent for how much I have had to do. Whoa. This was a brand new bottle when I started. Um... But I could also be completely off about that. I could be slurring my words way more than I actually am and not realizing it. It's just kind of what happens. That's awesome. I bet your daughter would love the original Danger Mouse and Trap Door. The episode Custard is hilarious. She actually was into the new Danger Mouse for like a hot minute, but then moved on from other stuff. Um, I don't know if this is a bad way to ask this because I'm noob at this, but... Uh, would it, in your opinion, be hard for Doctor Who to depict a cross-dressing doctor or, excuse me, non-cisgender, non-binary, etc. doctor? No. I don't think it would be hard at all. All they have to do is have them visually present in a gender-blended or ambiguous or androgynous way and literally never draw attention to it. Just have it be. It is literally that simple. Uh, how long has a guy got to work to achieve the moderator promotion? <laughs> uh, Joel, I had no idea that you wanted moderator privileges. Privileges? Privileges. That's a hard word. Um, all you had to do was ask, dude. Seriously. Um, how do you talk to your daughter about your gender identity and other LGBTQ topics? Uh, I don't. Because that's the thing. I've never had a sit-down conversation with my daughter about my gender identity. Because I haven't had to. Because this is her normal. She doesn't need a conversation about it because this is just who I am to her. I've never hidden this from her. And that was something that her mother and I had a conversation about even before she was born. That this was going to be presented as normal and that that was more important than anything else that she not have to be told about this that she not have to rebuild her understanding of me based on finding out about this that it's her standard it's her normal it is just her knowing me as i am it's me not hiding who i am from her and i never have she was two and that was the first time she saw me in full dress now i don't really do that anymore unless i'm performing but there was a time when in order to feel more feminine i would have to do the full dress i'd have to do full makeup do wigs use breast forms high heels the works i don't have to do that anymore to connect with my feminine side and i'm grateful for that but she was two years old and her mother and I had her watch me put on the makeup, 
put on the wig so that I didn't just disappear and suddenly come back looking different. She saw the process. She understood that it's still me. It's still her father. So that, and as far as she's concerned, I'm just, I'm just her father. She doesn't call me something different if I even present full feminine. My relationship with her never changes. No matter what my presentation is, my relationship to her is exactly the same. I am her father. And sometimes I look one way and sometimes I look another and she doesn't blink an eye because that is how she has grown up. This is her normal. Uh, okay, what do we got here? I love your channel so much. Don't know how I even found it. Thank you to YouTube algorithm. It has treated me well on occasion. Um, but you've got such fresh, interesting content. Love you. Thank you very much. And, oh boy, here we go. Ah, imagine if the doctor meant P.T. Barnum. I would be up for that provided they did a more accurate representation of P.T. Barnum than um, Greatest Showman was. And I say that as a fan of Greatest Showman. I legitimately like that movie. If I'd seen it before the end of the year, it would have been on my top 10 of the year list. <sighs> the Simpsons is 30 years old. Oh! Mm. I almost swore at you. Mm. Don't tell me that. Um, I think if a river met 13, she would try and put 13 in a very revealing dress and makeup. I think she might, and 13 would stop her, and that's why it would be awesome. We know you drank too much when you start talking like the Empress of the Rachnos. <laughs> Discord. Oh, thank you, Carolyn. Yes, I do need to check the Discord. Hold on. I gotta... Okay, that's not too bad. Uh, hot take. The early seasons of the real Ghostbusters cartoon are my favorite incarnation of the franchise. There are good episodes in the later seasons. Some people will tell you that after it became Slimer and the Real Ghostbusters, none of the episodes were good. That's not true. There are still good ones at that point, but it is true. Most of the really good ones are from the first season or first two seasons, depending on how you look at them. But yeah, no. Um, the the Sandman episode is my personal favorite, but um, the first Sam Haim, uh, Sam Haim? whatever episode is amazing and i watch that every year at halloween it's phenomenal the early seasons of the real ghostbusters got to oh i read that <laughs> well my 30th is coming up soon so oh you youngins which doctor would you want to meet i love 13 and 10 or 13 and 12 see 12 is my favorite right now but i'm not sure i want to meet him because i think i'd annoy him I'd probably go with 11 I think we're, we're close enough to the same, same wavelength that it would work. <laughs> okay. Oh. What do you do when your daughter experiences sentiments to the contrary? I'm, I feel like I'm missing a front piece to that because I'm not sure what you're referring to. Sentiments to the contrary of what? And I ask you that as I'm about to jump over to the Discord and jump out of this. So, like, you've got... I'm going to give you a minute to respond to that and clarify the question. Uh, and I'll try and pick it up. Uh, the doctor needs to meet Stephen Sondheim. <laughs> you said, ooh! Jimi Hendrix. I'd be down for that. Uh, I'm off to a marathon screening of the complete Star Wars sequel trilogy in the cinema tomorrow night. It lasts nine hours and ends at 3 a.m. <laughs> I should probably rest. Yes, Joel, get some sleep. Seriously, dude. Um, I shall make you remember Extreme Ghostbusters. See, I never really watched that, so I don't have any opinions either way. I think that was follow-up on my question. I guessed that it was, but I, I, I still feel like I don't quite understand it. Uh, which would you rather have rewritten, Crimes of Grindelwald or The Last Jedi? Crimes of Grindelwald, because I feel like, at least personally, I better understand what Crimes of Grindelwald was trying to do, whereas The Last Jedi, what it was trying to do just didn't work for me so like that would have that that would be more than a rewrite that would be a complete rebuild from the ground up which i sure as heck don't have the energy for 
Um, should the monk return to Doctor Who, would he still be a monk? I mean, I would think he'd have to be, because otherwise it's a reference nobody would get. Um, I'd be down for that. Thasman, your opinion? I'm not onto that ship. Thasman. Thasman. Don't quote me ship names. I don't know ship names. Worth a dang. Um... Can you say supercalifragilisticexpialidocious? Yes, I can, because that's cheating, because I know that word, because I know the song, because I grew up with the movie. Yeah, I was going to be able to say that one. Council of Geeks has a Discord. I do, but it's a Patreon perk, so hop on over to the Patreon, maybe. That's a thought. Anyways, I got to hop on over there. Um, So let me see what the questions were over here. Okay. I'm all right. I am fine. I am with it. I am awesome. I'm not awesome, but okay. Um, uh, which do you find more annoying and which do you find funnier? Nice guys or nice girls? I'm trying to sort that question out in my head. Um... They're both capitalized, so I feel like they're in reference to something that I don't quite follow. I mean, if it, if it is what I think it is... No, I can't sort that out in my head. I can't, I can't parse that question. I'm sorry. Should have done this before I had as many drinks as I did. Where in the world would you most like to visit that you haven't yet? Ireland. Uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what is the most overused trope in science fiction? Um, I don't know if it's the most overused, but the one that tends to bug me the most is the primitive culture viewing the interstellar travelers as gods. Not a fan of that one. Especially considering that, like, you even look at primitive cultures on this planet, we tend to... We tend to depict, like, ancient Rome or the Celts or whatever as, like, really firmly believing that the gods were real. But, like, all evidence indicates that they thought of gods, you know, Zeus, Poseidon, Hades, etc. The same way mo the majority of people in modern culture think of God in a nebulous Christian context, which is, yeah, I kind of believe, but not, like, a hardcore that dictates every aspect of my life. So... That, I don't know if it's the most overused, but it's the one I'm the sickest of. <sighs> I'm okay. What made you fall in love with Star Wars, Harry Potter, Doctor Who, whatever? Well, Star Wars, like I said, I've literally, literally always had Star Wars in my life. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember not having Star Wars in my life, so I couldn't even tell you. Uh, Harry Potter, just curiosity, because I knew it was a big thing. And I was like, I suppose I should check this out. And I read the first book and I'm like, that was really good. And then I kept with it. Just really straightforward. I didn't, I didn't read the first, uh, the fourth book had cut, had come out by the time I started reading them. So that was the point at which I jumped on. Uh, Doctor Who, um, if I were to narrow it down to one thing, it was a nude. I was channel surfing in London on my honeymoon, saw an ood, stopped because it reminded me of a mind flare from Dungeons and Dragons because that's how big a friggin' geek I am. And uh, it was the Satan Pit. It was the last 20 minutes, half hour or so of the Satan Pit. I'm like, I gotta watch the rest of this. So as soon as I was back in the States on Netflix, on Netflix DVD, <laughs> had, thing, had the thing sent to me, caught up, through the first three series, started watching it as it aired, starting with series four. Uh, would you rather read something or watch something? The ADD nature of me says watch something because I get more out of less time commitment. <laughs> um, that's not to say I don't enjoy reading. Uh, it's just I need to break from it more readily. If you had one wish, except wishing for I have infinite wishes, what would it be? And what would you do to come to a conclusion for the best possible wish? I don't know. Best possible wish is easy. I've known this one for a long time. I would wish that any time I had to purchase anything, 
I could reach into my pocket and pull out exact change. Stopping off for coffee, for coffee, exact change. Having lunch, exact change. Buying a house, exact change. New car, exact change. I just reached in my pocket and there it was. A fine from the IRS because I can't account for where my income is coming from. Exact change. <laughs> so that would be my one wish. If you ever consider writing your own fantasy sci-fi novel, not only have I considered it, I've done it, hoping to publish it next year. Dreams of Fire, watch for that. Uh, what is the airspeed philosophy of an unladen sparrow? Depends if it's African or European, and you have just been flung off the bridge, my friends. Uh, as you put five to six as your top regeneration, ooh, shout out to the latest video. No, not latest video, but re a recent video. Uh, did you finally get uh, Davidson's doctor in that moment? Maybe not over the whole of his regeneration, but at least in that story? Uh, honestly, no. I still don't get him but I can still recognize, separate from my inability to get five as a doctor, I can still recognize that that transition and the reason for it and his decision in that moment that caused the regeneration is friggin' perfect. Um, I noticed in the background of your videos, you have the, <clears throat> you have the pop of the Kerblam man. Where did you get it? It was, it was gifted to me. It um, was sent to me. I cannot remember by whom. But this, this was gifted to me and was then dutifully put upon the shelf. Oh, I, I, I'm going to have to backtrack once I'm done with the Discord to see if I missed any super chats. Oh, boy. Okay. Um, let's see. Kind of a ramble about missing the stream. Oh, wait, they'll actually make it. And you did! Good to see you here, TV and Sen. Um, not sure if it can make, if I can make the live show in case not have a wonderful holiday and an awesome new year. Sweet. Because yeah, mm, that's worth pointing out. This is the last live stream of the year, which is also part of the, also part of the reason that I'm willing to get friggin' slosh doing it. Um, because the next two Tuesdays it's Christmas Eve and then it's New Year's Eve. And yeah, I have other plans cause I do have something vaguely resembling a life plus you know family so uh this is going to be the last one for the year i'm almost at the one hour mark so i guess this one's running long i'm having fun hope you are too getting back to the discord um if you had a tardis and could go anywhere where would you go i honestly don't know <sighs> i could think i'd have a ready-made answer for that but i really don't because it's one of those cases where literally the entirety of time and space opens up to me and I kind of freeze up and like, ah, I don't know. You tell me I, I could go anywhere and suddenly I, I just, I have no ideas. Uh, do you think there should be any taboos for satire? Oh boy, this is a, this is a question that I shouldn't, I shouldn't be trying to answer. Uh, when not sober, but here we go. Do you think there are any taboos for satire? I think uh, there was someone, was it Charlie Chaplin, who said that you can disperse a lot of things with laughter. However, in Germany, no one sane would ever make a joke about the genocide, at least as far as I know. I will refer you to the video I made a few months ago on who's allowed to tell what joke. Even though the question you're asking is slightly different, my answer is very much the same, which is my answer is any topic is fair game, but not any target is fair game. So to use the example of Germany and making jokes about the genocide, you can make a joke, theoretically, I don't have one ready as an example, so don't ask. But you could make a joke about the genocide so long as the punchline is not the victims of the genocide. If your punchline is the Nazis, I don't think anyone's going to object to you taking a shot at the Nazis. Well, some people might. Some people will legitimately say you shouldn't joke about that regardless. But I will say, I, I will stand by my stance that no topic is off uh, limits. Some targets 
should be off limits, especially depending on who the joke teller is. Because context matters. People want the nice clean answer of either this thing's okay to joke about or it, or it isn't, but that tries to ignore context and context dictates everything because who is telling the joke and the situation and the circumstances under which they're telling the joke make or break the entire thing every single time. Ah. Uh. I can't believe I've only been with the council one year. <laughs> Last year's holidays time was, was when I started watching. Oh, cool. What room do you film in? I film in my bedroom. My bed is right there. My desk that I edit at, the, edit at is right there. And no, I'm not going to turn this around and show you because this room is a friggin' disaster. And I have a little too much self-respect. Ugh. What's your biggest pet peeve? People who, after I introduce myself and say, hi, my name's Nathaniel, go, hi, Nate. If I wanted you to call me Nate, I would have introduced myself as Nate. I didn't. That one just pisses me off. Um, not exactly about the genocide, but look at the Faulty Towers episode. The Germans. Great example! The Germans. Okay, I'm off the Discord. I'm back to the main thing. Hello, I'm back. Yay! I don't think I missed any super chats. Somebody tell me if I did. So I don't have, I don't have to scroll all the way up through if I don't need to. Um Holy crap. Is it weird I love when Americans say Doctor Who bloody love your guys' accent? Really? Do people love the American accent? Is that a thing? Like that's weird especially for me because I have a very neutral accent or at least I think I do. Like, the most pronounced accents in America are, like, Southern or Minnesota or, you know, California Surfer, New York, Boston. I mean, there, heck, there is a Vermont accent. I don't have it because by the time I moved here, I was already five years old and, like, the formative years of my accent building were kind of behind me. So... I, like, I have an American accent, I accept that, but I don't think I have an especially region-defined one. I think the only thing I picked up living in Vermont is I picked up the yup. Um, because that, rather than saying yes, that is a kind of a Vermont thing. Well, it's kind of an Upper New England thing. You get it a little bit in Northern New Hampshire and you get it in Maine, but yup. Yup. Nope. Uh, I suppose it's the equivalent of, uh, um... Hot fuzz and the yarp. <laughs> remember the legends. Uh, remember the legends of tomorrow met P.T. Barnum, and it was a good episode and pretty accurate, while more toned down. That's true, and I, that was Billy Zane too, wasn't it? He's always a good get. Why aren't more people hiring Billy Zane? I'd hire Billy Zane to be on this podcast if I could afford him. I should find out what his going rate is. Maybe I can't afford him. Hmm. I probably know the answer, but would you rather have the Eighth Doctor back for a live-action spinoff series or Omega back for an episode? Also, what are your hopes for Season 12? Hopes for Season 12 is likely to be a, um, an episode topic, so I'm not going to answer that. I would rather have Omega back because I feel like having the Eighth Doctor back in a competing parallel show just invites comparison and competition, and I'm, I'm not sure that's what the fandom needs right now. Um, Thirteen's new nickname from me, Northern Blondie. <laughs> Wait till they hear my voice. See, I just I just read that and I immediately heard it in my head as Jack Nicholson's Joker. Well, they get a load of me. <laughs> um, I almost called you Nate in the comment I left on the video you did talking about your book and the number two author diary. Well, good thing you didn't, my friend. Uh, do you or have you ever watched the YouTuber Vsauce? No, I literally only know them because Folding Ideas did a video on that channel. That's the only reason I've even heard of them. Not forgetting NARP. Yes, of course. <laughs> NARP? I get why you didn't like uh, Tenants. I didn't uh, want to go Lime, but I think the War Doctor retcon and making him the form before the last made it less problematic. I'm not sure I'd follow. 
I guess I'm not sh I'm not entirely sure how inserting the War Doctor impacts the regeneration of 10 to 11. I'm not... There's a connection you've made there that I'm not making. Uh, would you ever write a Doctor Who novel... Would No, write. Would you ever write a Doctor Who novel published under the BBC? If they're willing to pay me... Hell yes! Almost swore. Um, yeah, of course! Like, I, like seriously, you, you folks, you need to understand this. While I do have some degree of standards, and I'm not going to say I'm for sale to anybody, I am very much for sale. If somebody wants to pay me to write something, pay me to write a script, pay me to write a, a concept, a spec, whatever, if the money is there, I will do it. And happily. Like, I, it's not like I'm too good for the money. No. I want, I'll take the money. Like, again, not from anybody and not for anything. But I am for sale. I am not going to pretend otherwise. According to U.S. subtitles, Jodie Whittaker comes from... <laughs> Hoods in the field instead of Huddersfield. <laughs> I'm not even going to try and read that with an accent because it would just be insulting to everybody. Uh, 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 did you, did you, you said you never gave your daughter the talk about your gender since it's so normalized with her. What would you do when she experiences contrary sentiments, i.e. gender fluidity spectrum, unsure what to call it? Um, I mean, if she ever, if she ever expresses to me confusion, um, or questioning either about me or about herself, how will, what will I do? I'll sit down and talk to her, figure out where her head's at and figure out what I can do to help, help her better understand herself or me, whatever's that question. I mean, that's all that you can do as a parent uh, with anything. The quickest way to drive yourself crazy as a parent is to try and imagine what you would do for every possible scenario. Because you can't account for everything. And if you think you can, the instant something happens that you didn't account for, your world crumbles. I'll deal with it as it comes. When it comes up, how I'll deal with it will depend entirely on the circumstances under which it happens. And if it ever does, I probably won't talk about it here because that'll end up being a personal moment between me and her. So there you go. Uh, does this, does this freeze on me? Okay, cool. Um, where did you get the Derek Jacobi screwdriver from? I don't, I don't have one. You're referring to something that I don't know what it is. I mean, I've got, um... I've got atypical screwdrivers because I've got like the the build your own that I've currently got in this configuration, which could be made into other ones. I feel like this is the popular configuration of that thing, though, because I feel like I've I've, I've like um, Linkara has it in this configuration. Riley Silverman has it in this configuration. Both cool people, by the way. Um, never met either one in person, but um, still. Okay, yeah, my chat has definitely, because I can see on the phone that I'm broadcasting from new questions coming up, but they're not coming up for me here, so hang on. There we go! A Not My Doctor YouTuber is going to take you saying, I am for sale as evidence that you're being paid by the BBC to make good reviews for Jodie Whittaker. I mean, I think the easy counter to that is the fact that I actually didn't give good reviews to pretty significant chunks of Jodie Whittaker's run, including Rosa, the most politically progressive episode, like, ever. So, if anybody needs a counter, there you go. Take me out of context all you want. I'll put it back into context, and you can sit and spin. I am confrontational when I drink. Life is interesting. Uh, my dad grew up in Pittsburgh, which is a, a very distinctive accent. 
You know, I never detected it when I was growing up. Yeah, it's funny how that works. I love 13's reaction to her regeneration. What did you think she was thinking when she saw her new reflection? I think she was thinking, oh, bloody hell, I've gone northern. I don't know what she was thinking. Um, it was kind of cool to have her be happy with it, though. Because the initial reaction to the regeneration... Excuse me. For the modern era up to that point, you know, 9 to 10, new teeth. It's weird. And, you know, 11, the chin, blimey, still not ginger, you know, criticizing. And then 11 to 12, I've got new kidneys. I don't like the color. You know, largely critical or like skeptical. It was kind of nice that 13 was like, oh, I dig it. Cool. Um, and of course, obviously, some people read into that, like, oh, it's saying that women are better, but, 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 no, it's only saying that if you project that onto it, either because you believe that or you want to believe that the BBC is saying that, so you can be angry about it, but there you go. Gotta go getting late here. Congrats on the milestone and have a happy Christmas and New Year. Thank you, Kara. Thank you very much. I gotta have you clarify for me one of these days whether it's Kara or Kara. Because I have a friend named Kara, and my kid has a parakeet named Kara, and I don't know which you pronounce it as. And you've probably even specified before, because I feel like I brought this up before, and I either don't remember or didn't notice if you answered. That is my life. Okay. Um, I mean, the 11th Doctor was revealed to be his 12th and final regeneration. Then that ends. The Doctor dies for good. And that's why 10 was being emotional. Um... I guess? Um, I don't, that feels like a stretch to me. You're trying to use reality on those people, they don't accept that. Well, I don't have to accept people who don't accept reality. There we go. We can all just mutually ignore each other. Everybody's happy. Or everybody's mad, or, ha or everyone's happy with the reason that they're mad. There you go. If you want a good moment in Family Guy, I would recommend the moment where Ida talks about her struggle. I haven't rewatched the Ida episodes that I've seen in a long time, and I and I haven't watched Family Guy for a while, so I don't know if she's come back. Um, so I, I don't feel in a position to speak one way or the other on that. I will say that. Um, I have mixed feelings overall about what I remember being Ida's depiction. But like I said, it's been a while. I haven't watched Family Guy in a long time. I can highly recommend the Watchmen HBO series, though. Warning, the comment section is probably going to need a lot of cleaning. You'll know why just from the first episode. I actually had a co-worker really strongly recommend that today? Maybe yesterday? Oh, it was yesterday. Yesterday, he, he really strongly recommended that to me. And I would like to see it. It's a matter of carving out time. I would have made time before if I'd had more people asking. The thing is, like, literally two people have asked me since it started airing. So I was like, oh, okay. So it's not, like, in high demand for my subscribers, which bumped it down the priority list. Uh, it's Kara. Cool! Ha <laughs> ha! Do I pretty much answer anything? No, but I want to know. I want to know. Like how I get uppity when people shorten Nathaniel today, I want to know how you prefer your name to be pronounced. Kara, awesome. I feel better now. Now that I know that. Cheers. I should mention there's also alcohol in this. Ha! Oh, dear. Uh... What's your favorite episode of each classic era Doctor so far? <sighs> okay. Um, bearing in mind that I still have a bit of a ways to go to catch up on all of Classic Who. So bearing that in mind. Dalek Invasion of Earth. Tombs of the Cybermen. Time Warrior. City of Death. Caves of Androzani. Vengeance on Varos, Remembrance of the Daleks, Night of the Doctor. There you go. Do we count Eight as classic, though? Because he's kind of a weird anomaly that happened between the end of the classic era and the start of the new era. 
I guess by default we put him in classic, but really I feel like he's kind of his own thing. Almost separate from everything else. Uh, I think in your I think in your Doctor Regeneration ranked video you could have included the cause of death for all. I know you said about six, but not for the others. Um, I mean the thing was the cause of death wasn't a major factor in a lot of the decisions. Um, because that kind of tied it in a bit more into what the narrative up to that point had been, especially with something like, say, um, Planet of the Spiders. If I'd factored in, uh, Cause of Death, that would have, like, say, for instance, brought that one down. It also probably would have put, uh, Legopolis even further down, because I'm not a fan of that episode, like, at all. Even aside from the wonkiness with the Watcher. If you were Dr. Manhattan, you could see every episode at the exact same time. <laughs> yes, but then I'd also be an aloof prick. Scratch that, I already am. I guess Ink counts as the paradigm shift doctor. Ah, I feel more like Ink counts as the just anomaly doctor. Because... He didn't kick off anything new, but he was so far removed from what had come before that you can't count him as the old. It's just a blip on the radar. And I say that liking the Eighth Doctor. Our classic Doctor Who episode requests Patreon exclusive, like TV episodes and stuff. No! Okay, so... Classic episode reviews right now are on the podcast feed. So you need to search for the Council of Geeks podcast. That's where Classic Who reviews are going right now. Which episode I review, that is a Patreon vote. Um, to Because I'll narrow it down to three options and then the Patreon uh, supporters will vote. But the reviews are on, are on the podcast. I'm not going to say how regular... Oh, God. I'm not going to say how regularly... They go up because I've been really inconsistent about that. But th those are those are publicly available. I don't I don't plug the podcast feed largely because I'm so inconsistent about updating on it. Um, so you've made sure you've already got your paycheck for your series twelve reviews from the BBC. <laughs> Too bad Fools already got his. It's been stolen by the Living Flesh supercomputer. Well, that's why Stu Bagful's always so bitter. Because the BBC cuts him his his bribery ch check to ensure that he reviews kindly all the new Doctor Who episodes. But then that money gets stolen by the Living Flesh supercomputer and then he gets bitter and that's why he's so grumpy in the reviews. See? We've sorted it out. We got it figured. Uh, what sonic screwdriver design do you like the most? It depends if you mean on the show or as a toy. Because as a toy... As a reproduction, I'm rather fond of 12s. But the thing is, 12s looks too much like a toy on the show that I don't really love it all that much. Um, despite the fact that it was often waved around like a magic wand a little too much, I think I probably like 11s the best. Going back to God and science fiction, I'm being biased, but I don't think that the actual Abrahamic God should be touched in Doctor Who, unless it's something like the presence in the DC universe. I think it would just be better for them to avoid that question altogether. So, like, it'd probably be a bad idea to ever have the Doctor encounter, like, Moses or Abraham or Jesus. Oh, God. That, that would be a, a nightmare. Uh, do you mind being called Nathan? Yep. Yep, I do. Because not my name. Um, do you have a favorite version of A Christmas Carol? Yes, the Muppets. Th oh, God. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, thoughts on Star Trek? Personally, I'm a big DS9 fan. So, I have... Ooh, boy. Never really been able to get into the classic series very well. I do like a, a fair number of the classic cast, original Star Trek cast movies. I like Wrath of Khan, though not as much as a lot of Star Trek fans do. I love Voyage Home, because I grew up on that. I like um, Undiscovered Country. I like First Contact. Um, 
I actually even like the reboot and Into Darkness and uh, Beyond to varying degrees. Um, more than anything, I am a next generation person, though, because that's... <laughs> there are a number of shows, and I haven't talked about this on here, but I've talked... Hold on. <laughs> uh, whoo. I haven't talked about it on this here. But I mentioned it when I appeared on Cheerscast with Ryan Daly, who's the one in the logo holding the lightsaber. Because um, he has a podcast, which is very good, and folks should check out. I can plug people besides myself. Yay. Um, where he's going through every single episode of Cheers with a guest. And, um, you know, talking about it. And I, I was on it for a uh, season one episode. And I got to tell him this, but I don't think I've ever said it here. Um, there are a number of shows that in my head get cataloged as my grandfather's shows. Because I would, when I was younger, um, through about eighth grade, actually, I would spend summers with my grandparents because I went to day camp. Um, that was a short walk from their house. But then obviously on you know evenings and the weekends, I was back with them. So there were a number of shows that my grandfather watched that I, in my memory, I think of as his shows. And MASH was one, Cheers was one, Seinfeld was one, and Star Trek The Next Generation was one. And Star Trek The Next Generation was the only one that I would actually sit down with and watch with him. I would kind of float in and out of the others. Sometimes I'd watch them, sometimes I wouldn't. But Star Trek The Next Generation is probably always going to be my go-to, even if I feel like another series is better, because I have the nostalgic link to that. It connects me to those summers at my grandparents. It connects me to my grandfather. Um, and my, both my grandparents have passed on at this point. And I can think back to that time and he'd be in his chair. <laughs> I, you know, I say his chair. You know, it, TV was in the living room. There was a couch. There were two chairs. But there was a chair that was his chair. So he'd be in his chair and I'd be on the floor, on my stomach, doing this, watching Star Trek The Next Generation. And I don't think, no matter how good any new series might be, I don't think anything can compete with the nostalgia of that for me. So, there you go. Uh, by the way, I saw Funko Pop of... Norm today and thought of you. Norm! <laughs> I saw George Went on Broadway in Hairspray playing Edna. He was so good. It was amazing. Uh, Nathaniel, I love Series 12, the BBC, <laughs> all these bags of money. Look, Honestly, so like two things. If, if like this, and I, I have said this, and I will reiterate it. If I ever get approached by the BBC, by Disney, by Marvel, by anybody saying, here's money, review our thing positively, you have my pledge that what I will do instead is an expose on this channel about how they tried to bribe me for a review. Because I cannot imagine that they would ever offer me enough money that I wouldn't just do that. Because <laughs> I could be a mercenary bugger and if I had an email chain, a recorded phone call, any evidence, which I would have to have because they're not going to show up at my door, that I had been offered to be paid off for a positive review, I would get way more press, way more views, way more everything just by going public with it. 
Because if they could offer me more money than I would make doing that, then it that that just wouldn't happen because it would not make any financial sense because that's the amount of money that I have to offer to everybody that I quote unquote bribe for the good reviews. And that's a sink, that's a money sinkhole. Because like I'm not necessarily gonna put a dollar value on it, but if somebody wanted to pay me for a review and guarantee a positive review, they would have to they would have to offer me more than I was gonna make in a year. Minimum. And if they were offering that to every every critic that they that supposedly gets bribed, they would have doubled the budget of any one of these things. And there's no friggin' way. Ugh. Hmm. Especially considering all those BBC bribes come from uh, from us license fee payers. Yes, thank you, Mr. L, for your contribution to the Council of Geeks as your uh, license fee has paid for my bribe to positively review Series 11, which I didn't do. So I guess I owe the BBC their money back. Ugh. What was the most stupid, silly thing you ever did while being wasted on <laughs> water? Uh, now you're never going to be if the BBC is watching. Damn it! That uh, they don't watch the live streams. <laughs> um, stupidest thing I ever did while being wasted on water. Um, see, I, I, I actually know the answer, but I'm not, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you because it involves other people and I don't, I really make a point of only sharing my own story. If I feel like something that I have to say is somebody else's story, it's not my place to share it even if like they only have 50%. So I know what the answer to that question is and I'm not going to answer it. Uh, imagine Doctor Who and Jumanji crossover. I still need to see the new Jumanji stuff. I still haven't seen Welcome to the Jungle. I've been meaning to for freaking ages now. Um, I've seen the YouTube video Joker versus Pennywise. If you do watch it, just know some of the humor is pretty morbid. No, nope, I haven't seen it. Um, if you've seen enough versions and would have the time to do so, would you want to do a ranking of a Christmas Carol adaptations? Um, see, that's the kind of thing that, like, at least in my head, no promises. Because I don't want to let people down. But in my head, that's the kind of thing that, like, maybe I could do if this was my full-time gig, if this was how I paid my bills. Um, but since it's not, um, I just I just don't think I have the time. Because the thing is, like, theoretically, if I didn't have to hold down a 40-hour-a-week job, that is, in theory, 40 hours a week that I could devote to this and bigger projects, like watching every version of A Christmas Carol and then ranking the suckers. Um, in reality, what I would probably be gaining would be, uh, let me think for a minute. I'd probably be gaining between 20 and 30 hours a week because the amount of time that I currently spend on the channel, which happens between when I get home and when I go to bed, um, ranges from 10 to 20 hours a week. So if I just shift that to a daytime job um, of 40 hours a week and I, I don't have, if I didn't have to do my day job anymore, that means I add about 20 hours. So I wouldn't actually add as much time as you would. I, I don't actually just get to add 40 hours to my week um, because I would like to think that I could stop <laughs> at say five um, if, if I was doing this as my actual day job. But I still think that would be enough time to be able to consider you know, doing longer, you know, bigger, more expansive, more viewing hours, more research projects like that. I mean, that's the, that's the kind of stuff that I really hope to do more of if, and it is an if. I wish I could say when, but I can't guarantee that. 
But if I ever get to the point where I can safely leave my day job and have this pay my bills, that is the kind of stuff that I want to spend more time doing. But will I ever get there? I have no idea. Uh, when do you think the doctor will be played by a person of color actor uh, or an actress? Who would you pick? Uh, like I did my picks for who I think would be good actors for the doctor. There's a whole video on that, so you can check that. When will it happen? I have no idea. Um, how do you think that Graham, Ryan, and Yaz will leave the TARDIS team? I'm, I'm still sticking to my prediction that Graham's going to die. I was fully expecting it to happen in Series 11. It didn't. I still think that's how he leaves. The rest of them, I don't know. Why would you take this blue Dalek off the shelf? It was beautiful. Because it wasn't actually mine. It was my daughter's and she asked for it back. That's why. Is it just me or is sci-fi comedy an underrated genre mix? It doesn't happen a lot, but when it does, it's great. Things like Hitchhiker's Guide and The Good Place. I think the thing with sci-fi comedy is that by its nature, if you're going to do anything with a sci-fi bent, whether it's sci-fi comedy or just straight sci-fi, doing sci-fi well is expensive because you're either paying for a lot of practical effects and makeup, or you're paying for a lot of CGI, or you're paying for both. And comedy, by and large, comedies need to be cheap. Because, you know, you're banking on a certain type of humor to land it, to carry the whole thing. And if it doesn't, well, then you're not going to get your money back. And comedies are honestly a bit more of a dice roll than most genres because if it's not funny, it doesn't play. And I think because they are a bit more of, of a dice roll in that way, studios don't want to throw a ton of money at comedies. Like even comedies with really big name actors, they don't also have a ton of special effects. So, you know, comedies cheap out... A, Comedies top out on the cheap side for the most part. Whereas sci fi done well can't really be done cheap. Um, or it takes a really razor sharp production plan to make a sci a good looking sci fi movie on the cheap. So unless your joke is this looks like crap and these effects don't look convincing, the sci-fi comedy is going to be way more money than most studios or networks or whatever want to spend on a comedy. When they do, if it works, it's amazing. Because, like, the two can definitely go together as far as general genres and mashing together goes, but it's, it's an issue of the expense. How would you rank the regenerations of Curse of the Fatal Death Doctor? Oh, God, I don't know. I don't even like that thing that much. Red Dwarf does a great job looking cheap. Red Dwarf does, but then again, Red Dwarf, part of the, well, two things. One is, as a BBC production, especially starting as it did in the 80s, the expectation wasn't that it would look good in the first place. Because it was a BBC production, it wasn't really competing with, say, Star Trek. It was competing with how people remember Doctor Who, which meant it could afford to look cheap and be fine. So Red Dwarf is kind of a bit of an exception. And if you're going to make the cheap effects part of the humor, you can work that, but that does limit the kind of comedy you can make out of it. Uh, what new Who villain would you want to return? Mr. Finch. Always. Always, 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 always. Uh, this includes classic villains that have come back in new Who. Still Mr. Finch. Anthony Stewart had bring him back. How do you think the Doctor would get stuck in Paris 1943 in Spyfall Part 1, Spyfall 2? Spyfall. <laughs> Dart 2? Part 2. I can speak. I'm not drunk. That's a lie, and I have no idea. How do you get people to give you honest criticism? Uh, people who have read my script have said that it was good, so I know that it's what its strong points are, but I want to know its weak points. Um, 
I mean, the, the thing is, you just, all you can do, anytime you present anyone a piece of your creative work and want honest feedback, all you can do is say, please give me your honest opinion and trust that they are doing that. Is it possible that some of them still give you positive and ignore maybe negative criticisms that they have for the sake of being nice? Yes, that's possible. But the thing is, you start second guessing that and you're undermining the entire process. And also creatives have a inherent instinctive point that we tend to put more stock in negative criticisms than we do in positive because we can have a thousand people say what we did was great and one person say that it sucks and we will put more weight in that one person because there's this weird belief and i say weird as if i don't have it but i do and if it, it it impacts me too that negative criticism is somehow more honest and that's not true but we think it's true. And so when somebody comes back with the only good notes, we second guess that and we think, what aren't they telling me? And then when somebody comes in and tells us all the ways in which we suck, we think there's the honest person. Because unless you've got an ego the size of the frigging county I live in, then you tend to assume that you suck. And you're kind of looking for confirmation of that. And while it's not necessarily a good thing to end up with an ego so big that it is legitimately ironclad, you got to be careful of falling into the trap of thinking that only negative feedback is honest. Roxy Williams or... or so, oh, not Roxy... My vision is blurred. That's a bad sign. Rory Williams or Rip Hunter? Ah, uh, taken as individuals, Rip Hunter. That said, I would prefer Rory so long as he is paired with Amy. But if I am taking them solely as individuals, I would prefer Rip. That's why I tried to provide positive and negative points. I know, Carolyn, and you're really good with that. In case anyone was wondering, Carolyn is one of the folks who has beta read my book and her feedback has been incredibly helpful. So, I saw the big finished 10th Doctor Adventures Volume 1 are on Audible. Been wanting to get those for a while. I still haven't listened, I haven't listened to any of the 10th Doctor stuff, any of the 10th Doctor big finish stuff. My words are now legitimately starting to slur. And I might need to end this soon in the, for the sake of everybody. Favorite Batman and favorite Bruce Wayne? Oh. Favorite Bruce Wayne is Michael Keaton. Favorite Batman? Um... Favorite Batman is, um, oh God, what's his name? Um, the guy who played RoboCop, because he voiced Batman for Legends of the Dark Knight. Peter Weller! Ha ha! Oh, Tracy! Oh, you do this to me. Why do you think Constantine works well in Legends, but the solo film didn't do well? I know the exact reason. The problem with Constantine's solo series was not the character, because the character was done perfectly well. The issue was the structure of the Constantine TV show was anywhere from five to ten years out of date, because it was very much based around the structure of the case of the week. It was structured in the way the early series of the Buffy were structured. It was structured the way House was structured. It was a tired formula by the time Constantine started doing it. And I know some people are going to say, well, it's basically what Supernatural does. But the thing is, Supernatural started doing it when it was still fresh and then built a fan base and kept doing it for friggin' what, 14, 15 years, however long it went on. But Constantine tried to come in 
after that formula, the monster of the week formula, um, or just the problem of the week, you know, because like I said, House did the same freaking thing. And that formula was tired. It was a formula from anywhere from five to 10 years ago that they tried to make work and it didn't. And not because it was bad, because it was predictable, because it was tired. Whereas Legends is freaking nuts. And whatever you think of it, whether you like it or you don't, it's not predictable. A uh, little bit splashed out onto my hand there. Um, so whatever you think of Legends, Legends is not predictable. And holy crap, I'm an idiot. This was a horrible idea. And by which I mean, it was the best idea. So he slots into that so much better because it is a much more free form, easygoing, freely adaptable and malleable um, template that is used for legends. They can do so much more, go in so many different directions, and he just slots in there so easily. <laughs> That's it. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm done. No more. <laughs> no more drinks. No more shots. I am finished. Also, what do you think of the Constantine and Justice League action? I actually haven't gotten to any of the Justice League action episodes with him in it. I've only seen a couple Justice League action episodes. Oh my god, are my eyes bloodshot? Oh! <laughs> oh I've got to go helping my mom early tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, adding to my year with these live streams. Have a Merry Christmas and New Year. And for God's sake... Stay out of blank. You look sloshed. Yeah, I'm done. At this point, even if I get... <laughs> even if I get more... Um, uh, more Super Chats at $5 or more, I'm done. I'm done drinking. I'll stick with the live stream for a little bit longer. But yeah, no more shots. That, 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 that was... <laughs> oh man, that was it. Ugh. Comedy movie I'd recommend. Walk Hard with Dewey Cox. Um, uh, I just don't like that troop. Uh, I'm classy. Of comics, I don't really like Will Ferrell. I don't like Adam McKay. I don't like Anchorman. I just don't like that style of comedy. Will you ever rank your favorite episode of each Doctor against each other? A type of battle royale to, de to determine best or favorite episode? Possibly when I have seen more from classic era. Um, I'm going to give myself a hard cut off at nine. Because at that point, I should just lay down and drink water. Like, real water. Holy crap. Uh, Etrigan and the Demon think he should show up in the Arrowverse. Yes! I'm actually kind of surprised he hasn't shown up yet. Now that I think of it. On Legends, especially. Um, <clears throat> I put most stock in mixed feedback. Even if you love or hate something, it's rare to have no small pluses or nitpicks whatsoever. That's fair. Like that, like that, that's a pretty fair assessment. I think this is the first ever time I've seen you belch. <laughs> you can ask Liz. I do it plenty. I just try and hold it back. You seem past fun drunk. I, th I think I'm on the outer edge of fun drunk, which is why I'm stopping. Anymore, and I would tip over the edge, and it'd be bad. And then I would be what Liz and I term Queen in the North drunk. And there is a story behind that, but not my story to share. Have you watched Umbrella Academy? Uh, I think you could do a, a great review series. Um, I did watch it. The thing, the reason I didn't do a review on it was because by the time I watched it, it wasn't really current anymore. It was, it like had been out for a month. Um, 
If I get through the second season in a more timely manner, I might do a review on that. Um, but that was why I didn't do a review on the first season. Other than Hellbent, huh, is there any Doctor Who episode you'll never watch again? Worries of the Deep, Fear Her, The Crimson Horror, Kill the Moon. No, and I'll even watch Hellbent again. Because I would like to find something to praise about even the episodes that aren't good. What is your opinion on Crisis on Infinite Earth so far? Don't have one, haven't seen it. Too much movement with the hands. Alcoholic small <laughs> YouTuber kills himself on stream. Uh, that would be quite the headline, wouldn't it? I suppose it's it's not a good idea that I've I've got a rack of weapons right behind me. Ugh. Queen in the North! That's right. When did you first get drunk? I didn't... I was probably... I would have been 19. First time I ever got drunk. Because I was a... I was a lame ass in high school. And I never got invited to the parties where there was alcohol. So I didn't have my first drink until I was in college. So I would have been either 18 or 19 first time I got drunk. Um, Because like I said, I just... It didn't happen in high school. It didn't happen until I got to college. Of course, uh, technically speaking, legally I shouldn't have been drinking even then. Should have waited till I was 21. I didn't. Who does? Let's be real. That's not me encouraging drinking under 21. I don't encourage that at all. Because actually, even at the time, I remember my first time getting drunk, I'm like, I don't love this. Um, so actually, I kind of, I didn't like hard stop drinking but i didn't drink i never i was never a binge drinker drinking to get drunk has never been a thing that i've really done since you've seen umbrella academy already what were your thoughts i liked it for the most part um i have mixed thoughts about vanya's trajectory as like oh god why did i do that motion that that was meant to be like a showing a trajectory oh god moving on um, I have mixed feelings about her trajectory as a character because I think she's actually more interesting as what she was originally presented to be, which is the one person with no powers in the family of all superpowered people, as opposed to the thing she was eventually revealed to be. I find that less interesting. But short of that, I, I liked it pretty well. I really liked Five. Five was great. Have you been watching his Dark Materials? Not as they've aired, but I do need to watch the first four episodes because I have been commissioned to review them. So, that's coming. I was 12 when I first had wine, maybe 11. See, like, I tasted beer at... I don't know how old I was, maybe 10. I thought it was the most disgusting thing I'd ever tasted. And my opinion of beer has really not changed. <laughs> so, uh, do you think the new gods will show up in Supergirl post-crisis? Um, maybe? It's hard to tell, and here's the reason why. It's very obvious that at least at some point in the previous past, Warner Brothers had carved out the new gods to be a DC movies thing, because obviously they were, they were going to use Dark Side if nobody else. And the DC movies already have a history of whatever they plan to use in the movies, they don't want showing up in the TV shows. It's why there was a setup for the Suicide Squad in Arrow, even though the Suicide Squad was never allowed to happen because they decided that was going to be a movie. And so it was set up and never paid off in Arrow. Um, so I know at one point, it, New Gods were definitely going to be a DC movies thing. At this point, enough things have shuffled around that maybe that's not the case anymore. And also maybe they're not as stringent about ensuring that these things are kept so separate as they used to be. But even setting that aside, my inclination is that the expense of realizing the new gods decently at all would be more than a TV budget could reasonably be expected to pull off. Because Kirby's ideas were many things, but his vision was not cheap. 
to realize in any medium of the, the, other than illustration. I've never been invited to a party where there was alcohol. I neither confirm nor deny whether or not I've ever been drunk. <gasps> Wise person you are. Good sir. Have you ever watched a show called Ruby? If so, what are your thoughts on it? I have not. I'm well aware of it because it's hard to not be at least aware of it, but no, I've never seen it. Um, I am going to wrap this up soon, I think. I get yeah, nine. Nine's a good stopping time. I'll stop at nine. It'll be a big celebration, two-hour, end-of-the-year thing. <clears throat> Weird thing to ask. I saw this Instagram poll, and now I'm wondering, do you think the ladies... Do you think time ladies get periods? Do you think 13 would get her period? Personally, I don't think. Um... My inclination is going to be no. Um, I am resting my leg on the foot of my bed right now. I don't know why I felt the need to tell you that. Uh, my inclination is no, because unless and or until Doctor Who decides to contradict it, Time Lords don't reproduce sexually. They have the freaking loom thing which is still canon until it's not um but even if they decide that the um loom is not canon that doesn't automatically mean that time lord physiology works the same as human um because there's no reason to believe that it would so my my inclination by and large is to say no uh uh, let's see. We're not going to 11th hour then? Disappointed. I'm sorry, DB. Like, I, I've i got my limits. As the year comes to a close, I want to personally thank you for the hell-bent rant. Officially one of my favorite videos of yours to rewatch. This is my official favorite channel. Oh, God. Wow. Crap. Thank you, John. Wow. <laughs> Ruby is great. I've heard good things, but I'm also like, anime shows don't hook me all that often. I'm much more inclined towards anime movies than I am shows. Looms are a hotly debated topic. Yeah, that's true. Do you think that 21 is too high for a legal drinking age? Um, I don't know, because I've never actually looked into the, um, whether or not there's a scientifically based or research based reason for it to be 21 as opposed to 18. So, ever going to review the Arrow Arrowverse shows? Probably not, because the only one I watch is Legends of Tomorrow, and I don't watch it as it airs. I binge it over the summer after it's done. So unlikely. Thank you, Clara. So um, I'm not going to take a drink for that one, because I'm done. Congrats on, congrats on 40,000 subs. Uh, if you could experience any film, TV series for the first time again, what would it be? Um, Wow. Ah, oh, that is a good question. If I could experience something for the first time. Um, honestly, I'm going to go TV, but not TV series, specific episode of TV. I would love to rewatch... Black Mirror San Junipero for the first time. That'd be really nice to to feel that joy and that connection again. As far as a film goes, I think um, probably Shape of Water um, for a very similar reason. Liz would back me up on this if she was here. I cried 
two or three times watching Shape of Water because of the connection um, that is made between the lead character and the river god and her love of him um, regardless of anything else and the line that she has saying that he doesn't know that I'm incomplete the power of her feeling a connection with someone who doesn't see her as wrong or broken not even like overlooking a fault of her inability to speak but just doesn't doesn't see that it's even something to be viewed as wrong he just doesn't know as she says that she's incomplete that hit me so hard and I love that movie and it it really made my night when I won Best Picture because I wanted it to, I didn't think it would. And I would really like to go back and feel that again for the first time. That feeling of being seen by a piece of entertainment because it took the time to depict what it feels like to assume that you will never be accepted fully for everything you are and then to be to actually find that acceptance that you had assumed as a baseline you would never ever feel I felt that with San Junipero and I felt that with The Shape of Water and San Junipero I saw on my own, but I was so, so happy that I saw Shape of Water with Liz. Because I, at this point in my life, I feel embraced and I feel seen and I feel validated to a degree that I couldn't have even articulated before because it was just a background level of presuming that that would never happen. But I'm seen. My partner sees me. My daughter sees me. And much as this, I have freely admit, is a parasocial relationship, I don't know you folks personally, but I do feel like you see me. <laughs> to be seen, to be validated, to be embraced <sighs> that's magic what I get to do is amazing you folks are amazing people in my day to day life who embrace me, who accept me, are amazing. 
And I hadn't necessarily planned on ending <laughs> on this note, but I think I'm going to because I don't know that there's any way for me to bring it back to the chat in a way that doesn't feel like it undercuts this. There may have been some really good questions that came up, and uh, I'm sorry that I don't get to them, but... This means so much to me. This community that has sprung up around me and what I do. I don't even know how to express how much it means to me because it's not something I ever would have thought I could reasonably have asked for. And it's amazing. And you are all amazing. And 40,000 subscribers is amazing. And everyone who's in the chat right now is amazing. And everyone who watches this as an archive video <laughs> is amazing. <sighs> I was flipping through a notebook about a week ago. Maybe it was a few days ago, I can't even remember. I think it was last week. And I remember looking back on entries from years ago and reading how deeply unhappy I used to be at one point, well, not one point, but at points in my past. To read that and not reconnect to it. Instead to read it and feel like that's just not who I am anymore. I'm not that deeply unhappy person anymore. That is a feeling that I cannot even begin to express how much it means to me. And there's a lot of reasons why I don't feel that way anymore, but the support and love of you folks of this community is part of it. It's part of why I don't feel about myself the way I used to. Thank you. And I am going to wrap it up there. But... I really do mean it when I say that you are beautiful, you are valid, you are loved, because you are the council, and I just run the meetings for as long as you'll have me. Have a great holiday. Whether you celebrate Christmas or don't, have a great remainder of the year, and I will see you in 2020.